still remember the day we were over at, in Orpotiri in the forest there and we were working with Gina's class, which my son was involved in. We are just doing a bunch of outdoor stuff, teaching them to make bivvies and it was really interesting just noticing the level of engagement of those kids and, um, and in fact Gina was commented on it afterwards as we're walking out and she said, man, wouldn't it be awesome if we could have a, uh, an actually school out in this environment? The kids were so engaged, so into it. We started seeing these Māori boys, boys and, and girls, mm. they just were flourishing in the yeah. outdoors. The teamwork was amazing, they could solve problems really, really quickly, um, they didn't get flustered over things. For a long time you'd seen these Māori boys and, and other students sort of put into that space of you're below, you're well below, and we're only looking at reading, writing and maths. We were seeing those students in those outdoor contexts excelling. We started throwing that idea around, well, hey, what about an adventure learning program? I was teaching actually in a high school at the time, um, teaching te reo Māori and, and got a call out of the blue from um, Mike, the chairman of the board here, um, saying we want to set up an outdoor ed program. Um, we're not sure how to do it, but we think that you're the person to, to do it. So for our treasure hunting and our orienteering today, we have a little bit of a new map. We've added some new things on. What does the colour grey mean? Eden? All the buildings. All the buildings, ka pai. There's so many links back to the curriculum. Um, so when we're learning how, how to navigate it, it's linking into geography, it's linking into mathematics, um, it's linking into health and PE. Take your marks, set, go! We're looking for the one in the native. We um, assess the students um, against the key competencies for the adventure learning and measure what progress they're making. The school leadership and the Board of Trustees have been really supportive from the get-go um, and really the reason why it's been successful has been their support and their um, vision for this programme. The whole teaching team across the school works together to make it happen. We're still learning, like we're learning heaps, but we're learning the same, but it's we just do, in like, a different maths way. We do like and reading and all that. We just do it in a different way, like we don't have desks for ourselves, we can sit where we like and we just enjoy learning. We've developed our own yeah. localised mm. curriculum, which has five frames of learning. There's proficiency, which is reading, writing and math. There's experiential, adventure, conceptual, which is inquiry. And then there's kotahitanga, which mm. is about creating a culture of care in our school. So that encompasses our core values, mm. which is whanaungatanga, manakitanga, pautama and mana. How's that dialogue going between yeah. you and your yeah. bird? Nori and I piloted Imagine Learning and it was personalised learning, inquiry learning. We did the showcase for parents. My math goals are multiplying by tens and hundreds and I've got my model of a silver eye. That's beautiful inquiry. In terms of the inquiry that we're um, taking part in at the moment, um, the aim is to bring native birds back to a poetry school. So the children were given the scenario that bird numbers are getting lower and they're really important for our native bush. How are they important? We formed a few questions about that. Why are they important to our ecosystem? Maybe have your criteria open so that's always guiding you. We're still doing all our core subjects through what we're doing in inquiry. Plant more native trees that fantails like and keep off all the bad weeds that strangle the plants. It just quite naturally weaves through what we're doing. So for the writing, they're doing information reports. For the reading, learning how to skim and scan. Um, we've got the science coming through with the ecosystems and the birds' role in that. We like don't want to run around and tramp all over the little seedlings that are going to grow into big native trees for the birds. final part of the process is we are developing that area and planting it. We're going to put a bird hide. Um, we're going to fence it off, so they're doing a really professional job. Marpo? Marpo. Yeah, it's got a little kind of reddish Marpo. tinge and little wrinkly leaves. They feel it's like a legacy that I'll leave for f future students. So they are so passionate and driven with what they're doing. They can see the purpose behind it. Teaching becomes easy when they have that passion. And then it flows past the Paritu and Tawatawa rivers. Also learning about our local history, learning about local iwi, uh, talking to our local kaumātua. Gina composed a song um, about the local beaches. And then the whole Tane Mahuta, which is a kapahaka group, walked those beaches. It was all day. But, you know, it's meaningful and it's 
they understand what that song is about. Nixon is going to navigate us from here. We're going to cross the fence, we're going to go along the fence line to here. A lot of why we started it was for boys giving boys a, a space where they could be successful, where they could build confidence, and for that to, to correlate to success and confidence in the classroom. Um, and that has happened, but it hasn't happened just for the boys. It's been successful for all students.